Well, g'day everyone, good afternoon. Welcome back to the farm. All right, guys, I feel extremely lucky, extremely fortunate to be given this opportunity. So I'm gonna swing the camera around. I'm gonna show you what's going on here. So what we have here, folks, is a guidance system, full guidance system, screen, steering wheel, everything we need. Uh, receivers, antennas, spline kits for the steering wheel. It's all here. We've been sent this by Sphere Verkin. It's their F100 auto steer system. And as I said, I feel extremely fortunate to be sent this. They've sent me this. We're going to put it on one of our machines. We're going to give it a run and we're going to let everyone out there know what we think about it. So what machine are you putting it in, you might be asking? Well, I think I might have just answered that question for you. So it is going into the 9770, into the harvester. If it was earlier in the season and we were still doing some spreading and whatever, and we weren't in horrific drought like we are, I probably would have put it in the loader tractor. But uh, this thing has top con steering it now. And if you've been following along any of my harvests, you'll know that I'll be more than happy to do away with that system. So we'll chuck it in here. We'll chuck it in a serious bit of kit. We'll really put it to the test. So I think for this video, we'll keep it pretty simple. We'll unbox it. We'll get it all installed in the machine, the screen steering wheel wiring looms get it all wired in and uh, show everyone how to do that anyway we are going to get cracking on some install we might just go for some low-hanging fruit first and get the screen mounted up the steering wheel in and some stuff like that and then we'll move on to some wiring I'll jump up in a second I'll put that uh, screen in because I think that's basically just going to go straight in I'm sure it's just a ram mount which is oh, just down here so I've already got a ram mount up in there for the other screen. So that'll just go straight on there without any dramas, I think, which will be beautiful. But our steering wheel is there as well. And we've just got a whole heap of different adapters in here. So we'll just have to fiddle around and find the correct one. And, and uh, yeah, we'll get him on there. So as I said, I've already got a ram mount up here. So this will just slide straight on. It'll be an absolute treat. But I don't know. It's a super slick looking screen, I think, for what will be on the more affordable end of steering guidance systems. So, looks slick, excited to get it in and give it a run. Well, that was probably the easiest job that I've got to do, but I've still got a bit of old wiring and stuff here from the Topcon system. So, I don't know, I'll probably just, I might just take that totally out of the machine and uh, yeah, put the new stuff in. But we'll move on to the steering wheel next. So we'll have to get this steering wheel off and yeah, we'll find a correct adapter and go from there. Whee! That looks like the one, second one in. So yeah, you just pop your spline down in the steering wheel and then there's a bunch of little Allen keys that you got to, Allen key headed bolts that you got to run down in there and it's as simple as that. So screen is on, steering wheel is on. Now I had to put my thinking cap on a little bit here with this and I believe, you know, most of these systems are designed with tractors in the front of mine. So the steering column on a header is quite a bit different to that in a tractor. So they give you these brackets here. Normally underneath the steering wheel, you've generally got on a tractor like a big square sort of trim around there. And you'd bolt that up there and that would sit hard up against that trim. And that would hold that steering wheel and stop it from being able to pivot. But this is a little bit different. They did have this bracket in here and this is what I ended up using. But unfortunately, like the U-bolt's just a little bit too short and this thread here was just a little bit too short for what I wanted to use. So in the end, I just grabbed a piece of all thread, wrapped it around the uh, around the steering column there and bolted it on and it looks really good, I think. Um, won't have any dramas with that at all. But otherwise, yeah, if it was in a tractor, these two brackets here, there's a couple of different ones and I'll go and show you what I mean about these anyway. So typically in a tractor, you've got this directly below the steering wheel. You've got, you know, often you've got some light switches and whatever else. And that's where these brackets here would work an absolute treat. But unfortunately, my steering column's a little bit different. But these are the things you learn as you go along. And uh, I'm kind of expecting I'll have to lengthen the loom for the wheel angle sensor to go down the back of that machine too. Because when well, you think about it, you know, a tractor, is cab here, wheels and batteries often down here. So, whereas on the header it's cab and then wheels and batteries all the way down the back. So I had the same obstacles to overcome when I put the Topcon system on. It's just their generic kits and sometimes you just gotta uh, do what you gotta do to get it on. 
So next I think we're going to get our receiver and try and get that mounted on. We've got our bracketry here for that and I believe there's also an antenna here that needs to go on as well. So uh, we'll do all that and then we can start doing the wiring. First thing first while we're up here because this will be the easiest thing to do. We've got our antenna here. Now it's got a magnetic base but if you haven't got anywhere magnetic like this roof on this John Deere is plastic. So they do give you a 3M double sided uh, sticky pad there that you can just stick it onto your roof with but I think on this we should be able to get away with putting it on here I don't think that'll go too far receiver bracket right what they give you here is they give you two other uh, mounting brackets that go on the underside of the roof so you'd measure side to side get it as central as you can punch a couple of holes in the roof put these on the underside and then that over the top gives you a nice big surface area with those because like I said this is made of plastic uh, and then that would be your mount for your receiver but I think what I'm going to do I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've already got this bracket here right out the front I like to have the receiver as far forward as possible anyway just because we've got aerials grain tank extensions and stuff like that on the roof of this thing and that's why I think it's a good idea to have it right out the front here but because I got that bracket, I'm just going to cheat, punch a couple of holes in there, and I'm just going to mount it up on that bracket that I've already got. So we'll put our receiver onto our bracket, and then we'll head up and mount it up. We've got this sticky pad here to put on there. I think that just helps hold it steady while it's on there. So I think I'm actually going to cheat again here, guys, and I'm just going to put these plates over that plate, tighten them up, a little bit of a cheat code but that worked nicely all right next we'll get our wheel angle sensor on there and i tell you i'm a big fan of this wheel angle sensor i'll show you why that's the wheel angle sensor that i had to rig up for the top con i had to make up all this bracketry here this stuff here to mount it to the axle well this one here literally just goes onto the kingpin and bolts up sort of like that there and that's it it's obviously got some sort of a sensor in there that can tell what way you know the wheels pointing so pretty clever i'll be interested to see how it works and yes i already have pulled one bolt out of that kingpin so that wasn't missing <laughs> did opt for some longer bolts just to make up for that five or so mil we're losing there just make sure we got plenty of thread in there still and as suspected, that harness is going to be way, way too short to get up to the cab, but that's all right. We'll get the soldering iron out and we'll extend it. I'll cut it and extend it. It's uh, only four wires there, so it shouldn't be too bad. But that is all of the main components installed now, I believe. So it's really just up to doing some wiring, getting things in, you know, routing them where they need to go and connecting it all up now. The wiring harnesses are fairly easy to use because they're numbered on each end, I'll show you. So you see this harness here has a three on it. So I come down to this little diagram here, you probably can't read it through the camera, but I see threes there, so I know that one goes up to the receiver. So we'll get busy slinging some wiring around.
Cool, man, we're in, baby. So I just had to go through then, I had to connect to the internet, and then I just had to get a, a verification code sent to my phone so I could log in and just enter an email address and some stuff like that so I could get in. It looks like I'm all in now, so she's all she's all wired in, it's all mounted, everything's looking good. Yeah, I guess the next step's probably gonna be to take some machine dimensions and some stuff like that and start setting all that stuff up in the screen. So from this main run screen here, we wanna to go to our menu, I think, our vehicle library, and we can change our vehicle from here. So we probably wanna put a new vehicle in and we wanna set this up right so it knows what we're doing. Change this to harvester. Well, I already wrote that in, but we'll write it in again, John Deere. So this is where we're gonna to have to get some measurements done. We need to do all sorts of things. Measure from like the width of our front wheels, front to rear wheelbase. There's gonna be a whole heap of different things here. So I'm gonna to have to get a tape measure out and go out and start doing some measuring. Done all of those measurements, it wants to know a turning radius and luckily we just had one millimetre of rain roughly so I'll be able to see my tyre tracks in the yard. We'll go out and we'll turn it full lock and we'll take a measurement of that. That machine is saved in here now, so we've got all the measurements, it's in the screen, ready to roll. So I just did all that same stuff with the implement, so the 635D front that we've got for this machine. Just did all the measurements for that, put that into the screen. Now, the wheel angle sensor, I was told by them that there's no need to really use it, it works better on a header without having the wheel angle sensor on there so and the lead's way too short anyway so they said just take it off it doesn't really make too much difference so i just went into the screen and turned the angle sensor off all right guys i have to do a driving calibration on this thing but i think before i go and do anything like that i want to get this thing connected to a correction source just so the screen's getting any signal anything it might need plus i got to do it anyway so no time like the present to get it done now, as far as I know, there's a few different correction sources we can use here. I'm not a full bottle on it. Hopefully, I don't, I don't butcher it, but I think the more basic one is the PPP, which is precise point positioning. That's about 5 to 10 centimetre accuracy, and I'm pretty sure that one just uses satellite, so probably a little bit easier to set up on that one. Now, if you're looking for a little bit better accuracy, you can get your RTK or your 2.5 centimetre accuracy. You can do that through... Uh, local RTK provider on the local uh, N-Trip service. Now you're probably going to have a annual fee and you're going to need decent phone reception when you do that and I know with the Topcon system on RTK we needed good phone reception which was a big problem out at Bulele because there's a fair chunk of land out there that doesn't get good phone reception and the RTK wouldn't work that well but I've been lucky enough to be sent the V1 mobile base station so that there is RTK, that's your 2.5 centimeter accuracy. Don't need phone reception, no annual fees. So I need to get that thing out. I need to get that set up. Um, there's a little bit of stuffing around there. I'll just have to get my head around that because obviously I haven't done it before, but we might get that out and get that sorted first, get ourselves connected to our correction source, and then we'll just finish off what we need to here. Setting up the base station was actually a little bit more simple than I thought. I just took the base station out onto some level ground, spread it out, I grabbed the marking pin, I banged that into the ground underneath the base station. I then put the centre pole back in on top of the marking pin and I spent a little bit of time mucking around levelling it all out. There is actually a sight glass on there for you to get it as level as you possibly can. Then I put the antenna on the receiver, I put the receiver on top of the base station, I slid it all the way up and I turned it on. So the next thing I had to do was download the Sviverkin app. I created myself a profile, I selected the V1 base station and scanned the QR code on the bottom of the receiver. I then connected to the base station Wi-Fi. From here I could see all the, all the base station settings. I didn't have to change anything. The default was okay. So then I saved that location as a known point. From there I went back to the screen in the machine. I selected correction source, went to the mobile base station, 
selected other base station and then I just had to copy all the settings out of the app on the phone and make sure they were the same in the screen on the machine and then it all connected beautifully and all worked no worries. Alright so we're done with the base station we're connected as far as I can see it all looks good so I'm gonna run out now and do this calibration basically I think I just gotta mark an A line drive what was it 50 or 100 meters or something and then a B and then turn around and go back on the spot and anyway it'll tell me what to do we'll get it done all right so we'll turn that around and uh, get back on that B line or that B mark and uh, we'll click auto steer and it should drive us back down on that line Just got the guys uh, logging in remotely just to help me tune the steering on this and try and get it as good as we can get it. Alrighty ladies and gentlemen, we have unboxed it, we have installed it, we have connected it to the base station, we have calibrated everything, we've given it a tune in out there. And I think I'm going to leave this video here now. Next time I do an episode on this steering system, we'll be out in the paddock testing it. So that's probably going to be five or six weeks away, I would say, at the moment, just depending on the weather through October. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited to give it a go. My initial thoughts on the system are love the simplicity of it. Love the simplicity. Just the, the wiring, the amount of wiring that goes through the cab is just so minimal. And I'll, I'll show you this now, actually. So this here was the wiring that came out of the cab from the old system. 95% uh, of this was in the cab, so just an absolute rat's nest of wiring was sitting down under the seat in there. So admittedly, this would have more functionality, this system, but uh, you know, we're paying, we paid for all this stuff that we don't use, we don't ever use. All we needed this system to do was steer the header, and so that's what we've got in there now. Much more simple, a lot less wiring in there, and just a lot neater, a lot cleaner. I do like the screen, that's pretty slick looking and it's been pretty easy to use so far. Obviously I haven't fully tested it out so I can't say too much but for what I've needed it for it's been easy to navigate my way around. The only thing I didn't really like about the kit was probably the length of some of the leads. Uh, just wish that they were maybe a little bit longer because I really did have to think about how I was running them down into the cab to make sure I had enough length to get them where I needed them to be. And the wheel angle sensor, that would definitely benefit from being about double the length, even on a tractor, I think, just to give you plenty plenty of length there to get you, you know, to get it into the cab and get it to where you need it to be. But won't be long now, and we'll be putting this thing to the test. So thank you to Sveverkin for sending this system out to me. It's been a fun little challenge. Look forward to uh, getting out there and giving it a go. And uh, that's all I got for you guys today. So I just want to say thanks to everyone for watching. Really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, just consider liking and subscribing because that really helps us out. You guys have yourselves a good one. Until next time, see ya.